I just woke up like 13 different times in the middle of the night, so it was not a productive night of sleep. Well, good morning, everyone, and we're thankful that you're joining with us today, this morning. I'm glad to see you with us this morning as we gather together on our Pentecost Sunday service this morning. As we gather in together today, we're just going to ask the Lord just to come and minister and move in our place of worship today and ask the Lord to touch our hearts today. Amen. And as we gathered together, it was a good reminder of what the Holy Spirit does, how he rains down as uh, they sent, as the Lord sent that rain this morning to us. So we know the Holy Spirit is rain, and He comes in the form of a blessing. So when we see the rain outside, we understand that's a blessing to the earth. And as we gather into the tabernacle together today, we understand as the Holy Spirit rains down, that's a blessing into our lives today. And so as we gather together, let's all stand to our feet if you're able to. We're going to open up together with a word of prayer and ask the Lord just to minister and bless this service. Amen. And send the rain of the blessing of the Spirit in this house today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning that we're gathered together on this day. That, Father, that we can celebrate you and bless you. We honor you, Jesus. And, Lord, we ask this morning that you would just make a way into this house today. That you would come amongst us, Father, this morning. Inhabit the praise of your people today. And, God, I just pray for you to work today in mighty ways. And, Father, we thank you that, Lord, you are here in this house. And, Lord, we give you this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise together today. Let's greet our neighbors this morning as we sing this day.
Old time power. They were in
this morning I'm going to take a moment here and you know I want us to pray together before they sing another song and uh, as we do this is uh, one of our days that uh, we've come together and we believe for the Lord to move and to do things and do mighty works and uh, you know Marsha and them uh, her family she went to the hospital today and to be with Ernie Ernie got a bad report on uh, Friday from the hospital and uh, we're going to pray for Marsha today ask the Lord to bless her and bless uh, her family and touch Ernie. Uh, we're going to pray for Sister Evelyn. Sister Evelyn, would you make your way down here? Maybe it's good to have Susu come down with Sister Evelyn this morning. And we're going to pray for Brother Larry today, that God's going to touch his body. And then I'd like uh, Steve to come down. So all the family. Brother Daryl, you want to come down pray for Steve? Sister Shelby, you can come down. I want Becky to come down. Sister June, Brother Bernie. Uh, all the uh, Nicole, Brianna, you girls want to come down? I want to anoint Steve because uh, this morning we're going to give Steve a prayer cloth and believe God for him because on his eye, he showed me, uh, did talk, talk to a doctor, and he has a spot on his eye that they said is a lymphoma that uh, they're going to have to do a biopsy on and test it and treat it, and we're going to believe God that he can take care of that in his body today. Amen. And so as they come down, I'm going to come down and pray for Sister Evelyn. I need some others to gather around. Would you come down? Stand with them today. Stand behind them. Pray with them. And let's believe God to take care of these issues this morning. Amen. Go ahead.
let's, um, let's pray together. I want Brother Ron and Sister Debbie to come up. We're going to anoint them and give them a prayer call because, you know, what matters to God matters to us, and what matters to us matters to God. And you know what they have a need of this morning? They got some need. They sold their house. We praise God they sold their house, but we need uh, They're homeless. They need a house. So we're going to believe God that they're going to direct them to the right house. Amen. So let's pray together. Go ahead and sing it. here because Hans and Regina have been married for a year and the good news is that we're going to have some new grandparents right here. Regina has is having a baby and we're going to pray that God's going to strengthen them. They're going to be a little Hans, a little warrior, right? That's what they're all praying for. 
there. <laughs> a little Hans, maybe a little Regina, we don't know, but uh, one or the other, but where it's going to be a healthy baby, amen? And so let's anoint her, would you stretch your hands towards her and sing it again as we pray over oh. Take your neighbor by the hand this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and receive that word today. You know, that's a powerful word, and it is a confirmation to my spirit this morning for what the Lord has placed in my life to just minister unto you this morning. He's already confirming it this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Faith of God is what we need to move mountains, to see the baptism of the Holy Spirit come alive, see God do great and mighty works. Amen. And so we receive that word today. Amen. Amen. I want us to pray together this morning, and as we pray together, we're just going to ask and believe God to meet needs. Amen. There's people that need healings in their body. Let's just believe He's Jehovah Rapha, and amen. He's eternally the Lord, our healer. Amen. We believe He's our Savior. Amen. He saved us, and He can save those that are yet not in the family of God. And we're believing God to meet needs, do miracles with signs and wonders. Amen to bless the family of God on the earth. Amen. So let's just pray together today. Father, we come before you this morning, Lord. Lord, you see, Father, how these have stretched out their faith to believe for healing, healing in their lives, God. Lord, we see how you've come to set the captives free and to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to those that are bound and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, the year where the favor of God flows freely thank you lord for it father as we gather together into this place today we're believing you father that lord by faith in you alone 
that God you're able to bring healing and salvation and baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire God and you're able to set hearts aflame and you're able to do new things God you said in your word that behold I'll do a new thing shall you not see it shall you not know it father we see it we know it we feel it today oh Lord it's springing forth uh, rivers out of our bellies bursting forth rivers of living water we thank you for that today father and lord we're asking you this morning as believers are praying that god even right now father from this place to where father their hearts are going where the answers need to be god we pray to you this morning knowing that you hear us when we pray and father you answer your children and we thank you for that this morning in jesus mighty name we pray and everybody says a great big amen Amen. Praise God. We'll give the Lord a good hand clap this morning as you're seated. We believe God. Amen. To meet those needs. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And at this time, I'm going to ask our communion servers to make their way down. And uh, we're going to distribute communion today. And uh, as the first Sunday of the month, we're going to give you a, a, a serving. You can just pull the cups out. There's two cups, actually. The bottom cup is the bread, the upper cup is the juice. You can separate them, hold on to them, and then once everybody is served, we're going to come back together and bless the cup and bless the bread. We're going to partake of the Lord's table together this morning. Amen. And so uh, we appreciate you being here, and it's always a wonderful time to be in the presence of the Lord and partake of the Lord's table. Amen. And so they're going to bless you with a song as, as you receive the Lord's table today.
Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says this. The apostle speaking to us, he's recounting the Lord's table, and he says, For I have received of the Lord that also that I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, he said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For every time that you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are representing and signifying, proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. And so this morning, as we have the bread here in our hands, we're reminded that Jesus came to this earth to be our salvation. He took on a form of a man. And as he walked the way of the cross, he was beaten. And those stripes that he received are for our healing. The Bible says, with his stripes, we are healed today. And so this morning, as we eat this bread, we're reminded that the body of Jesus was given 39 lashes so that we could have health, that we could have spiritual health, that we could have physical health in our bodies. And so this morning as we bless the bread, let's thank the Lord that he's provided that for us today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that, Lord, that the bread of life come down from heaven to earth. That, Lord, that we are saved and we are sanctified. We are set apart and we are made whole through the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, Lord, today as we eat this bread, we are mindful, God, that you prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. But yet, God, you cause our cups to overflow. Because, Lord, you are a God who are more than enough. You provided the life to every heart in this house today. And, Father, as we eat this bread, we remember, Father, that moment that we accepted you as Savior and Lord. And we thank you, God, that we've never been the same since that moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's eat this bread together. Amen. And now we have the cup. And the cup represents the blood of Jesus. For without his blood, there is no salvation. There is no, uh, there is no getting to heaven based on good works. It's only through the blood of Jesus that we can enter in. And so this morning, as we bless the cup, let's thank him for that new covenant that he said. Amen. Let's bless it together. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. For what the blood of bulls and goats were unable to perform God in one act of Jesus coming from heaven to earth. Dying on a cross, forever salvation was there once and for all, for all mankind, from beginning to the end, everywhere in between, Father, you're the Savior of this world. And so, Jesus, I thank you that, Lord, that you're able to, Father, be here today, and, Father, we're able to be here in your presence, covenanting with you, Father. And, Lord, as we praise you, your spirit is amongst us. And God, I ask this morning that as we drink this cup, we're mindful that we do it in your presence. Father, mindful that it's only by you are we saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's drink this cup together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands and thank the Lord? He provided a way where there seemed to be no way. In the middle of trouble, God, you preserve our life. And I thank you, Lord, today that you made a way for us. There is no temptation that overtaking you, but such is common to man. But God, you are faithful, and we thank you for your faithfulness today, God. We bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap. Amen. Thank you, musicians, singers. You can go down. Thank you to our communion servers this morning. We're going to ask if they... Uh, Ushers will get themselves ready and together. Uh, we're going to receive our morning offering. And as we do, uh, it's a special time we have together now today because this morning we're asking for missionary offering as well. And let me share with you what the mission offering will be. 
Today, the missionary offering <clears throat> that you sow today will go towards our missionaries. On the back wall in this room, uh, hallway, we have a list of missionaries that we support. Some of the missionaries that we are faithfully supporting, one is Brother Thomas in India. He is a wonderful missionary, and uh, he does mighty work in India. And so today when you sow, you're helping a children's home, you're helping Brother Thomas, you're helping churches in India proclaim the gospel and to see souls saved. You're giving to Brother Melton, who uh, is doing a mighty work in Mexico, Central America, Honduras, Guatemala. And you're sowing into his ministry, and you're sowing into seeing souls saved, the Bible colleges there, helping pastors, uh, train up pastors. Uh, you're sowing into Brother Grady Pickett, who's in Iraq, uh, uh, Kurdistan area. Sowing in the Middle East, believing God to save souls and see that church be successful there. Amen. And so as you give in the missionary offering today, you're reaping the benefits of those salvations and the glory of God that being poured out in those areas. And so this morning as you give, you can mark it on your envelope, mission giving, and uh, it'll go right into those some of those missionaries there that we just talked to you about. Also, you can mark your offering there and you can just do it on the same envelope. And uh, we'll just believe God that he's going to bless you today as you give. Amen. So, Brother Clyde, would you bless this offering this morning for us? Father, we do ask your blessings upon this offering. And we know that, God, you'll use it for your glory and your honor. And now we just say thank you, Lord, for all of the mercy you show to your people. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for giving this morning. Amen. Some announcements. Make sure you pick up a bulletin. Uh, make sure you read those announcements. Saturday, there's going to be an open house for McKenzie. She's, uh, she graduated high school, and uh, everybody's excited about that open house that she's uh, going to have on Saturday. Next Sunday, we're going to have a special graduation Sunday. So uh, to all those that have graduated, uh, we want them to come be a part. We're going to bless them, amen, that the Lord will bless them through their uh, studies and their future endeavors they take as well. Uh, two weeks from the day's Father's Day, we're going to celebrate uh, all the fathers on Father's Day in just a couple weeks. And then we've got a whole bunch of great camps coming up, and we want you to come be a part of those camps uh, during our midweek services in July and uh, uh, in the Sunday night in August. So we're going to make those available. We want to go and support the campground. And and also, in the week to come, we're going to have a sign-up sheet. If you're interested in going, if we can get uh, some enough uh, participants that want to come and meet together on a Wednesday night and drive together and ride the bus over, uh, if and uh, we'll have that available and our sign-up sheet available if you want to sign up to do that. Uh, if you just want to meet out there as well, you can. James told me all the services start at 7 o'clock on the Wednesday nights uh, out there. And so I uh, want to go and support that. And then also... Uh, uh, Sister Linda starting a new group for uh, all of our uh, senior uh, uh, ladies that may be widowed. Uh, a new group's coming uh, that is going to be surrounded about fellowship and praying and visitation. If you would like to be a part of that group, uh, make sure you talk to her today and uh, get in touch with her. And then also... Uh, also, if you haven't signed up and you would like to participate in uh, funeral dinners, either serving or bringing food or doing both, make sure you sign up today. They're going to compile a new directory and going to get together and be part of that new funeral dinner team that they're being assembled now to. So we thank you for your service in that as well. Amen. Well, this morning, I want you to go with me to the book of Luke chapter 11. And as we go to the book of Luke chapter 11... We're going to see that this section is found in the context of persistent praying. Persistent praying. It's likened unto what Jesus told his disciples to do. He told his disciples to go when he ascended into heaven. He said, I'm ascending into heaven, but I'm going to send you the promised comforter. And when that promised comforter comes, I'm going to uh, endue you with power from on high. But I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to tarry and pray and wait for the promise of the Father. And so this morning we see Jesus uh, uh, has ascended into heaven at this time of history in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2. And now here comes the Feast of Pentecost. The Feast of Pentecost uh, uh, is a festival that's celebrated uh, as a harvest festival. A festival that's celebrated uh, after it 
transformed as sort of from a harvest festival to a, uh, to a festival celebrating the law of Moses. Uh, we see these festivals happening in the life of Pentecost. And now we see today, as we're looking in the scripture, we're going to see how the Lord sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost to celebrate now for us a festival of giving the Holy Spirit to the world. And as he told his disciples in Luke, 5, uh, Luke 11 to pray and to persistently pray, so now he's telling his disciples in Acts chapter 1 the very same thing. Tarry and wait, persistently pray for the promise Holy Spirit to come and to fill you. So I want you to stand with me if you're able, and we're going to read Luke chapter 11, starting in verse 9, and I'm going to read down to verse 13. It says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? But if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Let's pray together this morning. Father, I thank you for this passage of Scripture, Father. For, Lord, your word teaches us how to ask for the Holy Spirit. And, Father, as we ask for the Holy Spirit, it's given unto us. And so, Father, this morning, I pray that you would help anoint your servant as I stand in this place to be able to minister unto your people. And, Father, allow your, these words that come forth from me fall in such a manner, God, that you would allow the hearer to hear your voice, God, that, they would, that you would speak to them even as I'm speaking. And we pray these things together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated this morning. And as we gather together together today, we see that persistent praying uh, is a topic that surrounds a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it, this chapter of Luke chapter 11, as well as what we see in the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit falls, which we'll read that later. But we see that to live in a spirit-filled life, to, to walk in a spirit-filled life... Uh, to live in that way where we can pray without ceasing, constantly asking God to help us. It takes persistent praying, ask, seek, and knocking, and then allowing the Holy Spirit to come and to fill our lives and to direct our paths. And as we allow the Holy Spirit to fill our lives, uh, uh, He's going to give us an understanding uh, that the words of Jesus are very important, that as we read the Word of God together, the Holy Spirit comes to us, us, he fills us and then he empowers us to be witnesses for him in this world. And, and the first thing that we have to understand is that this is a promise. The Holy Spirit is a promise to God's own children. To everyone who is a child of God, the promise has been made towards you to you and concerning you, that the Holy Spirit will fill your life. Uh, in the passage here, we see uh, a series of promises. God makes promises to his children. He, in fact, he makes great promises to his children. He makes a series of promises regarding his children. And to his children today, he allows us to understand that if we come earnestly, if we will come seeking, that we shall receive. See, here's the promise. It says, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. That's what verse 9 says. It's the promise that if you ask, it will be given. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door's going to be open unto you. So these are assurances, though, that we have, that, that we have to understand that they are for God's children. They are not for everybody. It is not something that we can put up on our sign out in the front and says, ask and it will be given. Because the promise isn't belonging to all people indiscriminately. The promise is for God's own children. 
So if you are saved, if you have accepted Jesus Christ in your heart and life, then you can believe the promise of the Father and you can believe the words of Jesus and they will come to pass in your life. Now, if somebody driving by and they see that it says ask and it'll be given and you're hearing it saying ask and be given and you're not saved, maybe you're, uh, maybe uh, you, you're, uh, uh, you can go into town and, and you go in to do something in town, go into a business, a shop, whatever, and, and there you see something and you're like, uh, ask and it will be given. Well, I, I really like that, so I'm just going to take that. I'm asking for it. I'm taking it. I'm going to believe it's mine. How about a man? To all the men here uh, uh, that are not saved and that are single. You go into town and you see a lady that you like and you say, ask and it will be given. I like that woman. I'll take that woman. Right. Uh, that's not exactly what that means. It's not a it's not a indiscriminate promise made to all men, to all people. It is a promise that is made to God's own children. And this is how the promise works. It doesn't work that says that I believe that God's going to bless me as I go uh, into, uh, 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 into a, a, a casino. And so I'm going to bet everything I've got, believing I'm going to put it all on here because God's going to bless me because I ask him to help me. That's not, a, that's not what he's saying either. He's saying to a believer's, He's saying you can ask and you can seek and you can knock and the door will be open. But in the context of that scripture, see, context is very important because if you don't put the scripture into context, you get a pretext. And what a pretext is, is it's something that's taken out of order. And then what happens is you're saying, I've been asking, but it's not been coming. And so God must have done it. God must not love me. He must not want me to have all, uh, all the promises he has in store for me. Look what God's not doing for me. And then we have a pity party. And that's what happens in life. Uh, you have to go on and you have to just say, well, uh, it just is like it is. Well, that's what happens every time you get a pretext. Every time you take a scripture out of context, that's exactly what happens in your life. But then what happens when you understand the power of the verse in context, then you can understand that the promise of God made towards you will come to pass and you can pray and believe that God will bless and perform his word over you. Now watch what happens here in the context of this setting. What is happening is that a disciple of Jesus is coming to Jesus and he's saying, Jesus, will you teach us to pray? Teach us how to pray. Another passage is in Matthew chapter 7. The similar passage goes along. And then Jesus begins to talk about the Lord's Prayer. He begins to go through and talking about hallowed be thy name. He talks about you pray your kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You pray these ways and he gives us his prayer. And so it's coming from believers, from disciples that say, Lord, we want to pray in a way where we know that we pray in your will. We want to be able to pray in a way that we know that when we pray that it will be answered. And see, church, this morning we have a relationship now with the Heavenly Father. And this is a place in the scripture, Matthew 7 and Luke 11, reveals to us the power of our Heavenly Father. Because it reveals to us that God is not a God that is far off from us. But he reveals his name to us as Father to us. And he reveals his name as Father and he calls us to tell him Father. And he says, you call me Heavenly Father. Father. And as we call him Heavenly Father, it puts us into a family relationship. It puts us in a position now that we can, that we can understand how we can ask and how we can seek and how we can knock and how things will be open, how doors will be open, how seekers will find and how askers will receive. So Jesus uh, said, ask what you will. And we understand that Jesus, uh, uh, our Heavenly Father, doesn't give uh, promiscuous promises. He doesn't give promiscuous promises, but he gives promises to his children. And we're told that Jesus' disciples came to him and asked him to teach his disciples how to pray. And he told the people to call their God Heavenly Father. So we are to call God Heavenly Father. There are people uh, that uh, weren't concerned, these disciples, they weren't concerned with uh, how, how much uh, something costs or how they can make money out of something, or they were really concerned with how to pray. They asked him how to pray. Here's John's disciples. This is how John pray, but teach us to pray. And Jesus is teaching us how to pray. He's saying, you call God 
your heavenly Father. And then he says in context, how much more, verse 13, will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So to disciples, to people that love Jesus, people that are saved, born again, people that are living for Jesus Christ, that come into a relationship that are seeking God, that are praying and calling him heavenly father. He's made a provision for us. He said, the hev- how much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? This morning, as we look at this context, we see that these words are only spoken to Jesus' disciples. They're not spoken to atheists. They're not, spoken, uh, they're not spoken to people uh, uh, of the world, but they are spoken to the children of God And it is your promise. If you are a disciple of Jesus and you've received Jesus as your Savior and you've been given the right to be called the child of God and your heavenly Father has made this promise to you that the Holy Spirit is for them that ask Him. See, now, if you... If you uh, uh, go after another God or go after yourself in life, if you reject the privileges of being a a child of God uh, and being in God's family, then you can't believe these scriptures. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the doors will be open and the Holy Spirit come into your life. You can't believe these promises because these promises are not for you, but it's for people who, uh, who understand that God is our Father and that we want to seek God in this day where He hears us and He answers us. See, we understand today that there are prayers There are prayers that people can pray to God and he won't answer because they pray amiss. That's what James chapter 4 and verse 3 says. Let's read James chapter 4, verse 3. It says, it says, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss uh, that you may be consumed upon your own lusts. So this is what he's saying. So there is a asking that can be done. There is a asking that's going to be given to somebody, but they ask according to the will of the Father. Now, we talk about the will of God, and we talk about it's the hardest thing in the world to understand what the will of God is in our life. Romans says if we present ourselves a living sacrifice to God, it is our reasonable service to present ourselves unto God a living sacrifice. And then he transforms us. He transforms us because when you present yourself a living sacrifice to God, he begins to do a work on the inside of you. And and what is happening is you're a child of God and you're growing as a child of God. You're aging, you're progressing in your Christian walk with God and you're being transformed so that you can know and you can understand the will, the perfect will of God. There's a perfect will of God for your life. You believe that there's a perfect will of God for your life? There's a perfect will of God for every one of your life today. And now, it's our responsibility to say, say, God, in your will, I'm going to offer these prayers. And I believe that I can receive them because I'm asking according to your will. Now, if we're battling with the lust of the flesh, with the pride of life, if we're, if we're battling with these lusts and fruit of the flesh, then we ask amiss. So when we're saying, God, I want the pompous life, I want the easy life, I want the problem-free life, you ask amiss because it's not in the will of the Heavenly Father. Now, uh, I, was, I was thinking on this this week, and this is what I'm thinking about. And so uh, the Lord sort of uh, was talking to me in a, in a way that I could easily understand it. And, and it sort of just enlightened me to the fact of, of how the Lord's will works. Because in the passage, he tells us and he calls us to call our Father in heaven, Heavenly Father. And so uh, to many of you, you are parents in this place. You are mothers and you are fathers. And if you're not a mother or father yet, you have a mother or father and, you, and you'll understand the analogy that I'm going to use. Because when God's own children ask, then we can believe that we can receive. And see, when you're part of a family, you can ask. 
And you ask with the understanding, not that you hope that things get happen, not that you hope maybe uh, your parents will respond to you, not that you hope so. But when you ask, you understand, you pray in an asking way where you understand that you know that they will answer. So when we go before God, the Bible says we can go before his throne room, lay our petition and request at his altar, and we can trust him that he will answer. Because as a child of God, we pray from the position that God will answer. So when we pray, the answer comes. Now, watch this. The answer is not always what we want to hear. Or it's not, it's not, it's a delayed answer. It's not even a right now answer. And it's sort of like this. This is the analogy that, I, uh, that I've uh, thought of uh, this week concerning a passage of Scripture for us. So when we come before God as a child, when we come before our parents on earth, this is what happened. We would go and we would ask, I mean, you can ask for everything, can't you? I mean, you can ask, you can ask for a pink pony and you can ask for a zebra. I mean, you can say, Daddy, I want a giraffe. I mean, you can go out and, and you know when your child comes to you, parents or kids, you know what happens to you when you start asking those kind of things. You're asking amiss because it's not in my will to grant those kind of requests. Now think about that. So you can ask all you want for a pretty pink pony. You want a pink unicorn to ride on at flies. Well, you can ask all day long, but it's never going to happen in your life. It's not going to happen because if you're part of the family, trust me, just ask Audrey. She knows. She asks things all her life, and she doesn't get half the things she wants in her life, does it, do ya? She gets nearly everything, but not, there's some crazy things. But she learns the difference between asking a miss and asking what dad can actually give to her. So what can dad actually give to her, dad? I really would like some horseback riding lessons. Now that's something that you think, well, well, that's possibly in my will. That's possible that we can make something like that happen. You want a pink flying horse? That's never going to happen. But you want to learn how to ride a horse? Now we can possibly make that happen. Now, you want to, uh, Dad, I would really like some new shoes. Dad, I would really like a new, new dress. I would really like some new jeans. I'd really want this. I, I really like that. Our, our, their lists are never in. Amen. Preston, Preston's easier. He just wants basketballs and footballs and baseballs, any kind of ball and any kind of Nintendo games you can give him. He wants them all. And so you can say, well, you know what? They're, they're saying. Now, now, there are times in our life. As parents, they ask for things amiss. And what happens? There is no way that they're ever going to receive what they're asking for. But you know what? A lot of times it doesn't stop them from asking. They ask for things. They shoot for the moon because they never know. They don't have it in any way. So they figure it doesn't matter if they ask or not. <laughs> but you know, they never receive those things. But this is what happens. Sometimes we hear some requests. Sometimes our requests are like this. And when they ask a request of us as parents, what happens? Sometimes you stand back and you say, you know what? That's a really good request. That's a real, it sounds to me like it's a really good thing to ask for your birthday. Or it sounds like a really good thing to ask for Christmas. Let's put a Christmas list out there. That, right, parents? That's what we do because uh, that's how we get the kids to stop asking, right? <laughs> but we say, let's put it out there on a list. And... And there are times that we're able to give kids clothes. I mean, uh, if you have to go shopping, you have to get them clothes. you got to take care of it. We know the nature of how things happen in this world today. Uh, and so there are times that you just have to take care of major emergencies when they come up. If they come up and they say, if they say, Dad, I'm not feeling good, I'm sick, can you do something? You try to do something right then, whatever you need them to do. But then if they come up and they're like, they want something else, you're like, you know what, let's put that on your list. And, and that seasonally, there are times and seasons in our life, on our calendar, that what happens? That we are willing to go and give because it's in the calendar and it's in the cycle, such as Christmas. What happens at Christmas? We save up and, and we get the lists of all the requests. And, and you know, a lot of times, the requests that they ask for at Christmas, they've been asking all year, but then when you tell them to make a Christmas list, you know what happens? 
Those things aren't even probably on that list a lot of times, are they? And so they ask for totally different things. They're like, they've done, forgot about the things they asked for before. See, you're, I'm trying to get you to get a spiritual understanding of a natural concept, of, and I want you to watch where I'm going with this. So, uh, so here we have a list, and we have some things that can be done now and some things that can be done futuristically. So here's a list of some things that is a good request that you can have later. Birthdays, Christmas, special occasions, things like that. Now what happens when those times come around, then those gifts are given. Those gifts are presented. Now when we come together to God, He's called us to call Him our Heavenly Father. And so we can ask amiss when the Bible says we la when we ask upon our own lusts. When it's something to do with our own flesh. When it doesn't have anything to do with us trying to be a witness and a disciple for Jesus. A lot of those times, those promises are only consumed by our natural man, and they are, uh, they are consumed in our lusts, and those are ask amiss. But when we ask to his will, we can say, Lord, I really need the Holy Spirit in my life. You know that there are times and seasons on God's calendar. He's the one that gives us times and seasons in our calendar. And so this is what happens. Sometimes there are things that are now, and sometimes there are things that are seasonal. But sometimes God says that the calendars of now and seasonal come into alignment together. And on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2 says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, then they were together and they were praying. They, they didn't leave Jerusalem, but they were praying. They were doing they were obedient to what the father was asking them to do and as they were obedient to what the heavenly father's asking them to do the now and the seasonal came together and being pentecost sunday the now and the seasonal have collided together and it is a proverbial christmas day for people that are asking for the holy spirit it is a day for you to receive the holy spirit in your life because what happened the things that you've been asking for God is saying, now is the time for you to receive what I have to give. So this morning, you can ask, and you can seek, and you can knock. Now, now sometimes we say, it just shows the more intensity. God just wants me to labor over getting the Holy Ghost. We have to always remember that God already distributed the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's on the earth today. He's rolling all around this whole world in every country on this planet. He's hovering over the waters. He's hovering over the land. He's touching. He's hovering over people today. He's covering this earth with his presence this morning because he's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. And so now today, being everywhere, he's, he said that I'm on the earth, the Holy Spirit, to draw men to Jesus and to convict them of sin and to lift up the name of Jesus and to be that comforter. Now, there's something, though, called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Spirit is for people that are disciples. When they are discipled, when you love God, when you're seeking God, when you're saying, God, how do I pray? And he says, you pray and you pray and then you ask for the Holy Spirit and how much more will the Holy Spirit be given to them that ask? He's saying this, now you ask and you pray to the understanding that God will answer. And he says, when you pray, you can believe that you receive and you shall have that which you've requested. Now, there are promises that have been made. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 says this, All the promises of God are in Him, yea, and in Him, amen, under the glory of God by us, concerning us. So this means that the children of God should ask God to fulfill His promises. Because His promises can be given just on the basis of who He is. You know, there is a promise. There is an understanding that the promise is mine simply because I am a child of God. Yes, that is a promise. You receive the Holy Spirit, not on the basis of how much you labor and toil. Not how much that you, uh, uh, not how good you try to give and how much you try to be. Uh, it, it's not how God's standing up in heaven waiting with a ticker saying, once you reach this mark, then I'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. That is not how the promise of the Father works. The promises are simply because we are a child of God. There is a promise because Jesus says it's already yes and it's already amen. It just goes for the promise of the Holy Spirit and every promise that concerns the child of God in the word of God.
So you know what that means? It means God does not make um, uh, God's promises made to us are uh, the limits of God's obligation. So what this means to us is that God says in his word that uh, this is what he says. He says that uh, uh, when things happen to you in this world, he doesn't promise to give us perfect marriages without problems. He doesn't prob- promise to give us children without problems. He doesn't give us a life without problems. He doesn't cause us to have things. He said, my, problem is, my promise to you isn't these things. But my promise to you is this. That if you love God, if you're a disciple, you love God, a call according to his purpose, I'll make it good whatever happens in your life. That's what Romans chapter 8 says. It says, I'll make it good. I'll take those things that were meant for evil and I'll turn it into good for you just like he did for Joseph. And so every promise that he made is the obligation that God says, just because you're my child, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obligate myself to allow these promises to come to you because I'm God and you're not good enough to ever do anything to deserve it. So because I'm God the Father and you're my children, I'm going to bless you. Amen. Do you understand the power of the blessing? The blessing comes to us because we are the child of God. We stand as heirs to the throne, join heirs with Jesus. And he says, such are these promises that I will work all things to your good together for the good, that I will supply all your need according to the riches and glory by Jesus Christ. That Nothing ever will separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. That we will be able to do all things through Christ who gives us strength. That I will learn that in whatsoever state I am, therewith I'll be content. That the good work that he's begun in me, I know his promises, he will complete it until that day of Jesus' coming. And that he will give the Holy Ghost to those that ask him. Those are the promises he said, I've obligated myself to my children to. And so when we pray, we pray from that understanding. That say, God, here's your promises concerning your children. Now, God, your word says that you are a healer and that you can make things good. And so, God, we trust you. And so the power of the Lord is that he can bring healing into our life. And the word says that he's eternally our Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. So we can believe that promise can be concerning us. Now, the promise concerning the Holy Spirit is that if you ask, you'll receive. Because you're praying, you're believing, you have faith. He says, faith the size of a mustard seed. We don't have faith in ourselves to overcome it. We have faith in the Son of God who gave his life for us. And when we have faith in the Son of God, that's what brings us in the family of God. And when we have faith in the, in the Son of God, we become part of the family of God. And when we pray, this is what happens. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears when we pray. it, And then he says, and we know that if he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. We know that when we ask according to his will, we know that we have it. Because it's already yes. It's already amen. And so the situation has always been, it's never been God's problem. God says, my love for you have already established it. It's always about us. And so we don't have to wrestle the Holy Ghost to get the blessing because God's trying to make us wrestle to get it. He says, it's already established. And now what we have to do is we have to get ourselves in a position where we're asking, where we're seeking, where we're knocking, where we come to the Lord and say, here's my request. Here's my request. According to your will, your will says that the Holy Spirit will be distributed to all who ask him. The baptism will be given. It started on Pentecost. It happens today. How do we know the baptism happens? When we're baptized in water, you get wet. And when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, he gives you a prayer language. And that you can start speaking in unknown tongues. That you can feel the movement and the power of the Holy Ghost alive on the inside of you. That baptism of the Spirit. 
treasure. He'll give it to you. But we got to get into a position where we receive it. And so sometimes that's why we have to understand tarry and wait. And that's why other times some people are so open and ready that they can get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit at the exact same time. And it's never for the children of God to badger one another and say, how did, how did they get the Holy Spirit right when they got saved? And I, I had to tarry and I had to wait and I had to come to the altar 30 times. Well, you know what? We, had to, we should be coming to the altar every time we can because the Holy Spirit baptism isn't our once and for all end of itself. It's for us to continually be in field. And so, but anyway, back to, the, uh, uh, back to this. He says, it's never for the children of God to badger one another about how some have gifts and how some received at the beginning and how some received after. In fact, people love Jesus and the apostle goes to this group of people in the book of Acts and they go, have you received the power of the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we didn't even know anything about the Holy Ghost. And when he laid his hands on them, they went speaking in tongues being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit because God's Spirit is a promise to all believers in this world when you ask and seek and knock you can receive receiving is part of the asking and seeking and knocking the doors are open there's an open door in heaven already coming to earth we are standing in earth we have to open our door so God can fill us with the Spirit today what is the things that God has for us? These promises are to the children who ask him. Children who ask uh, of the Lord. He makes a way for him. So what we can do is we can ask the Lord and say, just like Joel, God in Joel chapter 2 verse 28, you said, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. And I will, uh, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. And upon my servants and handmaids, in those days, I'll pour out my spirit. We can come to God and say, God, I know in your word, you said it's for young men and it's for old men. You said it's for sons and it's for daughters. You said there is a power for prophesying and you said there's a pouring out of your spirit that will saturate this. So this is what we can come to the Lord together today and say, God, I'm dead and I need the spirit's life. I'm blind and I need the spirit's illumination. I'm ignorant and I need the spirit's understanding. And please give it to me as you've promised you would. And you know, if we pray, asking, seeking, knocking, he will give it. Hebrew, uh, Hebrew idiom is how much more? He says, are you going to go to your son, to your daughter, who says, dad, I need some bread. I'm hungry. What are you going to do? Snarl at him and throw him a scorpion. Snarl at him and throw him a viper. Or are you going to, who are evil, know how to give good gifts and give sustaining gifts to your children? Know, uh, that, know that the Holy Spirit, this is what God says, know how much more. If evil men know how to give gifts to their children, how much more does a good heavenly father, how much more does a good heavenly father will give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? And so this morning, as we come to this part of the service, I'm, I'm going to be winding down in just a moment, but I have one more thing I want to share with you this morning as we do, because it's asking and seeking and knocking. And it's, and <clears throat> it's not about the repetition of increasing in intensity. I just haven't asked enough. I'm just not receiving because I just haven't asked enough. And so that's why I just got to keep on asking. It's not about requiring the repetition of increasing intensity, but it's about the repetition of importance. The repetition of importance that we must appreciate that we have to have the provision of God in our lives in order to live effective lives for our Lord. And so today, when you ask and it doesn't come the first time, then you ask again and you ask again. And if it's a promise in the word concerning you, you can ask again. And you can come to the altar and you can seek again. And you can say, God, my door of my heart's open for you to fill me again. I have open heart towards you. I've, I've got a seeker mindset. It's always about us getting in the mindset of saying, God, I'm asking, I'm seeking, I'm knocking. And it's not about me trying 
to get more intense and saying, if I can just do it this way, that's how a legalism will bind you and it will strangle you because of the intensity that they will try to tell you. You have to follow these corporate set of rules and then you are good enough. And all the while, we're never good enough. Amen. And it's just a free gift that the Heavenly Father says every one of you can participate in and partake in. But you have to ask, you have to seek, and you have to knock you got to get your life into the setting where you say, God, not my will, but your will be done. You have a perfect will, I'll be your sacrifice. And God, it's about the repetition of importance that without Jesus, I can do nothing. Without Jesus, I can do nothing. And it can never be in this mindset either that we can handle the small stuff and we only need God to handle the big stuff. I need the Holy Ghost to bring the awakening, but I'll handle all these little things that come along. What, what God is saying is he's your father. And that as a father, he says he cares about your daily life. He cares about every single need you have. He says it's not just the big things. It's everything. It's everything. I, so that's why we pray. And we pray and we ask and we seek and we knock and we pray and we bless our meals. And it's why we pray and say, God, help me, help me manage my money well. And God, help me manage my family well. And God, help me to have understanding about my future and my calling. Help me. Uh, maybe you have family problems and you're just saying, God, I, I need you to help me with my husband. I need you to help me with my wife. I need you to help me with my kids. Maybe it's questions about God. Where am I supposed to go today? What am I supposed to do? God, uh, you're preparing my day before me so would you help me uh, uh, fulfill the day that you've called me to walk in today every day we need to be praying that way constant praying pray without ceasing these disciples are asking Jesus how do we pray where we know things will get done and we pray and we know that things get accomplished because we pray according to his will he hears and he performs. And so today, if you're in this place and you need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life for the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is given. We have to receive. Ask and receive. Believers, if you're here and you've already received the Holy Spirit in your life, it's good to constantly get a dose of the Holy Spirit in your life and say, God, I need you. Jesus, I can't live without you. I need the fresh Holy Spirit in my life today. And maybe today you just say, I just don't have the faith or the ability to believe that I can receive. That's why we tarry and we wait and we ask and we seek and we knock. And then when we come into alignment and when we come into an agreement with God, that's what faith is, alignment and agreement. When we come into alignment and agreement, the difficulty is not in God, but it's with us getting into alignment and agreement with God. And when we get into alignment and agreement with God, we understand that God has a river of Holy Spirit power to infuse us with that will bless your life and make you a disciple in this generation that will reach all kinds of generations, all kinds of ages, all kinds of people. But it starts by having an open heart to say, Jesus, I'm your disciple. I can't live without you. I need you right here. I need the Holy Spirit for every decision. Think about this. There are people uh, that people, you, we understand today, we've heard testimonies in the past of people that said, the Lord prompted me not to take that route, not to go that way. I, I went a different way or a, he prompted me to go do this and, and then something happened. It, it stopped what could have happened. People tell about 9-11 how, how, they, how they, were, they are thankful to God that they felt prompted not to take those flights and to do those things that go those ways. You know, there are ways that when we talk to the Holy Spirit, you can have a relationship with a heavenly father as an estranged child and son uh, to a father. And you don't talk very often. And, and that's, that's the kind of relationship the world has. They don't talk to the father. You can have the kind of relationship where you say, I, I'll call you on Father's Day and say, Happy Father's Day. You can have the kind of relationship that you talk to him every day. And you say, Dad, this is what's happening to me today. And don't you know when we talk about a father 
a father in the church, our heavenly father. We're talking from the viewpoint that he has wisdom and knowledge. That when we need wisdom and knowledge, we can just say, I need help. What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Can you give me some revelation? And we can trust our heavenly father to be the supplier of all that need in our life. So maybe today you're here and you say, I don't have a good relationship with the father. You can have a good relationship with your heavenly father. And that heavenly father says that I've got gifts to give called the Holy Spirit. And once the Holy Spirit invades your heart and life and baptizes you, it opens up fruit of the Spirit that will begin to grow and blossom. And it will open up spiritual gifts that, you are, that, uh, that God has created in you by your DNA, that you are talented in areas. But when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, He gives gifts and abilities that you didn't even dream that you could have in your life because that's the kind of God we have. Here is a gift. It's all giving. So this morning as I close, if our musicians make their way back to the platform, this is what I'd like to do this morning. I'd like for us to end just praying together. Thank you, Lord. Let's lift our hands and thank the Lord this morning for him. Thank you, Jesus, for speaking to us this morning. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I want you to stand with me in this place, if you will. There's a man named Charles Finney. He was a pastor and one of the, one of the starters of the Second Great Awakening in America. He was, a, he was a political figure because during the time of slavery and when there were no women's rights or minority rights, he was a pastor that prayed and was baptized in the Holy Ghost, fought for women's rights and fought for slaves to be free. And this man, Charles Finney, wrote powerful sermons. And this morning he wrote a sermon on asking for the Holy Spirit. And he talks to us today. Uh, I, I have his transcript here and that's the thing that he says. It's never about God. It's always about us. And this morning, I was thinking on that. And as I'm thinking on that, I'm reminded myself that God, he, you started a second awakening with a man that would preach and understand that it's never about him. It's always about us getting into the position where your glory is. And when we get in that position, you can use us for your glory on this earth. And so that's what I'd like for us to do together today is in this service by having a prayer service, just a prayer time. I want you to, as they sing a song, I want you to step out of your seats and just come to the altar. Just if you want to stand, stand and lift your hands. If you want to kneel, you can kneel and pray. But uh, Luke says, ask, seek and knock. And I want us to end doing that and saying, God, I want to be the mouthpiece that understands that to have a connection with you, it's about me getting into the position where you can fill me, where you can heal me, where you can touch me. So would you join me? Would you come to the altar this morning? Just lift your hands or sit on the front rows and just lift your hands and just say, God, I'm getting into position this morning for a filling of the Holy Spirit for you to bless me. I'm going to receive it today. I'm going to ask. I'm going to seek. I'm going to knock. I'm going to believe that I shall receive. The 
Bible says you shall believe that you shall receive and you shall have whatsoever you say it because when we ask according to his will we know we've already got the position that it's already been done thank you Lord you see the seekers this morning you see those askers today you see those knockers today you see those father this morning that are here father not a because they're trying to be more intense for you to fill, but God, because we understand we must seek you in relationship with you, in covenant with you, that God, as we ask you, you give. So, Father, would you give this morning? Give a fresh wind. Give a fresh wind. Give a fresh flame. Give a fresh, Father, fire of God. Let it burn on the inside, Father. That we can receive and experience. Oh God, we thank you. situation but he speaks to his children and how he sees us and so God I thank you 
that you see us filled with the Holy Spirit. You see us operating in your perfect will. You see us, God, being your living sacrifices. And so, Lord, today we've received. We receive it, God. We believe it, Lord. That, Father, there are doors that have opened. There are, there are opportunities that you've unleashed. And, God, you've sent them. And, Lord, we thank you that we receive it. And we receive it today. We receive it. Thank you, Lord, we receive it. Hallelujah. Are you thankful to receive of the Lord this morning? It says, that that I've received of the Lord, that's which I also give. The same night the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. The apostle said, I'm giving what I've received of the Lord. I'm giving to you. This is what his exhortation to the church was. Our exhortation is what the Lord has given, we can receive. And we can be thankful for the reception of the Lord in this place. Amen. Thank you, Father, for receiving, Father, these prayers today. Thank you for the blowing wind of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the power of the pouring out of the revival that you had to give to us, Father. Lord, I thank you this morning that, Lord, that you have moved in our midst, that, Father's hearts have been touched to receive, that, Father, as we ask, seek, and knock, we're not asking amiss, consumed by our lusts, but, God, we're asking in alignment with you, and at your season appointed time, it will come to pass. And what has happened today is you have given the Holy Spirit and we have received it and we thank you for it and we just bless your holy name today. In Jesus' name, we go out rejoicing, thanking you for this day you've given. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands. You can be dismissed. Fellowship. Make sure you come back tonight, 6 o'clock. Amen. See you tonight. Amen. Let's sing it again.